Well, it's always tough when you draw that high-level wrestler who has a lifetime of experience in a one-on-one -on -one competitive situation. Prevailing wisdom is he'll have the wrestling advantage in this one time. As his dad said, the moment he introduced him to the sport, he knew that he was made to be a wrestler. The kid slept in his headgear. He only wants to wrestle, and by doing that, he puts you in danger. He's constantly in your face, constantly trying to dig at your gas tank. He goes from transition to transition, single to double to high crotch. It does not matter the attack, he just knows that he will give you so much to process in terms of the wrestling that eventually he will get you to the ground. You ever sleep in your headgear? I sleep in my headgear. All the time? All the time. All right, big one for him here tonight. Let's get to it. All right, so here he is, one of the better offensive takedown guys we have in the UFC DC. And if anyone is well equipped to speak to this, it is you. The opponent knows what's coming. At least to this point in the UFC, no one's been able to stop. He just has to keep him away. Because the moment this guy gets close enough to either grab a leg or make body contact, right. now you're in trouble. He has a knowledge and an understanding of position from a lifetime of just all grappling, judo, wrestling, uh, sambo. He does it all, and he has just so many ways to get you to the floor. This guy once told me that if he can get your leg, he's going to finish. Right. Because he's going to give you so many things to think about, you will not be able to process and keep up with him, and eventually you're on the mat. It's unbelievable to watch him apply that knowledge to the mixed martial arts fight. And as the wrestlers say, this is not a guy you want anywhere near your bracket. No, you don't want him in the bracket. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. It's an easy first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 32 wins, 12 losses, one draw, and one no contest. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, USA, Tim the Dirty Bird Me. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 18 wins, 5 losses. He stands 6 feet 1 inch tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Spokane Valley, Washington, he is an Ultimate Fighter season winner, Michael Maverick Kiesa! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean has drawn the assignment here. Ready. Ready to fight. All right, so here we go with round one. It is not a question of if, it's a question of when this fight hits the ground. You've got a grappler, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Most people think we're gonna get a grappler's delight today. Yes, we are going to get a grappler's delight, but for the jiu-jitsu player, for the jiu-jitsu fighters, he cannot allow for himself to constantly be on his back because in the grappling realm, not only do these guys possess great submission skills, but the grounded pound, the advancements in the position is so key to the game. He has to make sure he's not thinking this is a jiu-jitsu match, this is a fight. Timing his shots nicely here, champ. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up and using a lot of diverse strikes. He got to whip his hip into that kick. Separate. Nice punch by Chiesa, though. Let's focus. Let's focus now. Big body kick lands. Oh, wow, those leg kicks are already taking effect. Oh, wow! Head kick. He lands a big elbow there. Oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. So a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. Unable to connect with the right. Keep going oh, and he connects with a punch there, DC. You gotta like what you're seeing thus far. I mean, the speed at which he throws is crazy. He's gotta be careful with his head to throw that jab. Means gets hit with that hook. That one had some pop behind it. Beautiful right punch, follows it up with the left. 
Here he is back in the clinch. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. Right hand press the clinch. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? And now he's got that tie clinch. We'll see what he can do with it. Oh, big hook. That was spin. That knee. That knee hurt him. Oh! Nice job of hiding that hit. Both guys landing with conviction now. Oh, big left hook there. Good see. This might be the biggest shot of this entire fight. He landed a massive hook to put his opponent on wobbly legs. I mean, he's cutting him down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Means his hook shot there looked pretty good, but blocked by the defense. Connects with a right. This combination lands for him. He is really putting his strikes together tonight. I mean, he's feeling himself tonight, John. He's doing a great job of putting everything together. And there comes the separation now. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Look at how he turns his hip over when he throws that kick. Good series of strikes by him there. Great job of mixing it up, staying active, keeping busy, doing great work. Beautiful strike. Keep it busy here on the clinch. And he landed the right hand there. Oh, man, his leg kicks are outstanding. And saw a great example of that just there. Means his lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Well, the leg kicks have been a big storyline in this one, and there's another one. So he continues to slow his opponent down, and it's a nice poker face on the other side. I'm not sure how many more he can take. He won't be able to take many more. Think about Edson Barbosa, how he lands those beautiful leg kicks, no wind up so fast. Eventually, guys get stopped from taking too many. This seems to be the path that he is wanting to take tonight in this fight. It gets caught with that punch. Not the easiest guy in the world to hit, but he got caught there. Oh, he gets it. So at long last, he finally lands his first takedown after several failed attempts. You knew coming in that he was going to stay committed to the takedown, kept on trying, and finally got him to the ground. Now, the guy's attacking the triangle. He finds himself in trouble because he got a little bit lazy in the full guard. Looks like he's trying to manipulate the head. This could be tight. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in a submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene. You ready to fight? You ready? Round two underway. Nice. Oh, looking to land the leg kick, but unable to find the target. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. Well, he has landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything together in terms of solid combinations. It's because he's not committing to it fully. He throws his jab. He may float a right hand out there, but he's not really sitting down on the right hand. He really doesn't seem to have the intent on landing it. He's got to be confident that it's going to land, and he's got to really throw his whole entire body into those strikes. Man, is he timing his shots well. Gets on the Left hand punch from the clinch. And he connects with a the punch there. We'll see if there's more where that came from. Boxing, boxing, 
box. Well, from a striking standpoint, he has put it all together. Tonight, he has landed a ton of significant strikes and a pretty easy fight, I would think, for the judges to score. It's a pretty easy fight to score. Tonight was a night where everything went right. That doesn't happen very often. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying. Oh! Again here, but Hurtens, what a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this one. Go finish this fight. Oh, buckled him there. Beautiful shot to the body. Oh! Just over three minutes to go. Beautiful oh. leg kick throw. He's got him right here. a punch there. Good connection by him on that. Great connect. So fast, so accurate. Watch the ability to land anywhere. Throwing hard in the pocket. Whoa! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got to be pulling her very bad. Oh, he lands a huge knee to the body. That's a crippling shot there. Punch by me. So a much different approach for him here in this second round. He was a little bit tentative in round one, a little bit of a feeling out process. Now he has clearly found his rhythm, found the range. We'll see if he can continue with more activity here in round two. Left hand punch from the clinch. Look at him yank the head and land that beautiful punch from the clinch. Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively, protecting his head, raising the guard, and really frustrating the offensive fighter a little bit. Lesson one in boxing class. Hands up, chin down. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Oh, massive knee up top. Oh, that was a really nice takedown. Now the guy's got on bar. He's attacking it on it. Gotta be careful, Armbar. Oh, Arm has been isolated, but he picks him up and slams him down. He lifted him through the air, slammed him on his back, and moved right into side control to get out of danger. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. Nicely done. Well, you know I don't like the knee very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> Here, DC. What a way. Oh, you don't want to be anywhere near his guillotine choke. Might have the neck oh, here. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round. Saved by the bell. So back to the stool. Mentally, probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. All right, so a huge round for him there. Nearly had him out of there with the head kick. Did get the knockdown. Talk us through the replay. He got the knockdown. He won the round. He did everything correct. The only thing he didn't do is finish the fight. But if he continues down the path, if he continues to do the exact same thing as he did before, he will get that finish. All right, here we go, third and final round. His misses are entertaining. Try to establish that jab. Well, 
Well, he hasn't really showed any sign. Oh! Ah. Now he's on top of him looking for a pitch. Attempt here. Oh! Why is he not recognizing this right now? He's got to recognize this is dangerous. And he's in a dangerous position. He got his foot on the hip, and now he's throwing up a triangle attempt. He's going to try to move his left arm across to get pressure on the choke. Oh, nice. Oh, well, he's got one hand in, one hand out. Now you're looking for defensively. There you go. Attempting a triangle, he's able to change course and get this fight to the canvas. Well played right there. What a punch. Oh. Circling towards the left now. Let's go. Oh, collar tie. Oh, he's really starting to apply pressure on his opponent here. Different approach here in the last couple rounds. And it's the exact sense of urgency that you want to see from a fighter take the judges out of it. Big kick land. Kick land. It's not too well, it's good effort. He continues to throw, but this is like double A striking. This is not high level. Yeah, you can't be missing. It takes so much energy to just... Oh! Huge right hand! Man. Looks like he's transitioned to an armbar. You cannot stay in the guard of these great jiu-jitsu guys. Frank, Frank, hold it tight, hold it tight, finish it. An attacking armbar. And he's out. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strokes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. Now he's gonna try to attack Kimura here. The Kimura is not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. Nicely done. Looks like he's trying to isolate an arm here, DC. Yeah, he's isolating it to try to get a Kimura here. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. Oh, man, that was slick. Now he's able to isolate that left arm. Look for him to step over the top of the head to lift his opponent onto his hip to chase his finish. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. Now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. And he's out. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. something with that left arm. He's isolating the Kimura attack. Notice he'll pick up his left leg, step over the head. Once he gets him on the side, he'll start to apply pressure to try to get the finish. All right, let's look back at some of the action, DC. They go the distance tonight, but you got to think he won over the judges with his striking acumen tonight. Yeah, you got to watch one of the best strikers in the entire UFC. 
He did everything so well, and in my opinion, he should cruise to a very easy decision. The official decision is in. It resides with Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 30 26. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Jim the Dirty Bird Means. All right, nice job by him there as he is your winner via unanimous decision. And sometimes I would think it's easier said than done to just leave the judges out of it. Dominant performance, and he gets his hand raised. Yeah, and if you got to go to the judges, Leave no question, right? Be the person that is so dominant that you know you're getting your hand raised. He did exactly that tonight, and he gets a dominant decision.